Hey guys, Tommy Bryson here, and welcome to the Tommy Bryson Show. And today, we're gonna take a look at a 24 year old that makes you run a hundred thousand dollars every single year. Now, by the way, that to me is a lot of money, no matter what age you are. The average person does not make that much money whatsoever. So, a hundred K at 24 years old is definitely a big deal, okay? So let's see exactly what she spends her money on. And if you guys are new here, I post videos every single day. So you should also subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. And on top of that, also destroy the like button. Now let's go ahead and react to this channel right here or to this video right here. For someone in their mid twenties who still lives at home with their parents, I thought it would be really cool to- Wow, mid twenties, so 24 years old, still lives at home with her parents and makes a ton of money. By the way, the idea that you have to move out so, so early, it, it makes sense sometimes because you move out, you got to basically build your own stuff, you know, you're more independent. But if you're still in debt, you're trying to get out of debt and you have like troubles or whatever, there's no big deal in staying at home for a little, I'm 23 years old. I still stay at home also. Am I 23? No, I'm 24. I'm 24 just like she is, I just turned 24. So yeah, I'm 24. Also stay at home and I also make a lot of money. So there's no there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, but I will be moving out June though, because you know, it's time. To represent that population and share my pros and cons of living at home and the pros and cons of the finance part of it as well. Hi, my name is Christina Trung. I'm 24 years old. I make around a hundred thousand dollars per year and I live in Fairfax, Virginia. A hundred K in Fairfax, Virginia. I don't know that much about Virginia, but I'm guessing it's a lot more money than it would be basically in New York. Time is the same money. It is the same money, but you know, in New York, things are a lot more expensive than probably in Virginia. So there's that too, right? I'm a project manager for a digital consulting firm in the DC area. Okay, project manager for consultant form. Okay, let's see what this detail. By the way, I love these videos because basically it lets me see all these other ways out there to go ahead and make a lot of money. It's not just YouTube or accounting. There are a lot of different ways to make a lot of money. So I love watching these videos for the ideas they give me when it comes to, hey, I could do this to make more money if I wanted to, right? So always watch these videos to get a lot of ideas when it comes to making income. I also own a cupcake company called District Cupcake. We do events and office catering in the DC and Northern Virginia area. Nice, nice. My, 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 what's my name? What's that, what's that person? My cousin, I forgot who that person was. My cousin actually has like her own bakery shop. It is very time consuming, but if you like it and you enjoy it, then why not do it? I think the biggest problem with my cousin was basing, she didn't know how to delegate that much. But if Christina here is like, you know, basically like delivering like to basically a lot of places and, and like basically catering, she probably knows how to delegate, hire people to help her out accomplish her goals. So to me, that's awesome. Thankfully, I've been very blessed to still have my job during the COVID pandemic. I think right now I'm working a little. Wait, what? This was in December 20th. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So March is when things started and still to this day, she's still making money. So that is awesome. Yeah, a lot of people did did lose their jobs during the whole pandemic and still till now, they're just, they're, the effect is still going on, don't get me wrong. A little bit more because there's less of a line between work and life balance. Christina parents immigrated from Vietnam to the US. I think my editor, Danny, his parents are also from Vietnam. Am I mistaken here, Danny? Put a yes or no somewhere here, unless I got you wrong here. But I think you are from Vietnam, right? My dad came here first, but they actually met in English speaking school, which is an immigrant love story, I guess. That is the number one thing. When you are, I have friends that are immigrants till this day, cannot speak English till this day. And it reminds me of basically like my aunties that although they're great and amazing people, they're like so old now and still don't know any English. Like that's the first step. Learn how to speak the language of where you're going. It is so important. If you don't know English, it's gonna be impossible to get a good job. So shout out to these folks for going out there and getting some English, okay? That, that's awesome. My dad promised that he would tutor my mom, which did not happen. He just wanted to go on a date with her and the rest. Hey, that, that's a nice one, man. Hey, can I tutor you? Yeah, I'm gonna tutor you. Mm -hmm. the rest is history. Being so young and seeing my parents struggle with their finances gave me the mindset of 
not wanting the same for myself or for my family. That less I hear that story so much, man. I hear it so much. I saw growing up with my parents, they, they were bad with money, so I wanted to make a difference. And by the way, this story is not that unique, but it's also not that common. A lot of people go the opposite way. My parents did this, so I did the exact same thing. A lot of people basically do that, so keep that in mind. But if you can see something bad and grow from that, even better. I learned the same way from my parents, like seeing what they did incorrectly and going out and trying to improve on it. So so shout out, shout out to you, Christina. Awesome. Lesson has stuck with me growing up and even in college. Anything that wasn't going towards student debt repayment or my apartment rent, I was saving up everything. Yeah, so shout out to her, man. Shout out to her, man. That's that's one big thing. People go to college, graduate with a ton of debt, but it sounds like while she was in school, she was just paying the necessities and paying for that loan and saving the rest, okay? So that is awesome. That is awesome. So congrats on that. That's a, that's a great, great mindset. I'm curious to see why she's living at home, though, if she's this frugal and all that stuff. Okay, so after she graduated, she moved back home, okay? All right. So I moved back in with my mom, dad, and sister because I wanted to, one, pay off my student loan debt. Okay, okay, look at this, guys, okay? She was in school, saving up money, but also now when she graduated, she still has debt, but she has savings, right? Usually, when you're in school, just focus on paying off your debts, right? Focus on paying them off. So when you graduate, you're fully done with them. And by the way, that dog coding... I've been dying for a dog, man. But where we live right now, there's like a landlord and the landlord does not like dogs. So I can't have a dog. And that was one of my motivations to be like, hey, you know, what? I need to get out of here, man. I, I can't stay here, man. I can't. I cannot. It, it's a different deal when you have freedom and you want to do certain things out there. So it's awesome. It's awesome. But yeah. And also be able to pay for my sister's college and the rent in this area is not too favorable. So. OK, so OK, right here, right? I'm staying at home to pay back my loans, also help my, my my sister with the tuition. I'll talk about this later a little bit more, but I just wanna hear what the advice here is and what the idea behind it is, okay? Let's just hear it. Decided to stay here for a couple years and pay off all my debt and save up for my sister's college tuition. By the way, when you grew up in an immigrant family, usually the one that kind of becomes something is the one that's gonna be kind of in a way responsible for the family. It's not like a bad system, but sometimes it can be a little bit too tie-in, but it all depends how they handle it. And by the way, if Christina went out there and graduated and worked while she was doing it, I highly recommend that she doesn't pay for everything for her sister, but her sisters need to be in college, have a job, paying for her own stuff, and if, then if you want to help, then help. No problem. But make sure, like, they have, they ha there has to be a level of ownership in what she's doing. If you pay for everything, she won't really... <sighs> It's very difficult to say, but paying for something with your own money, it makes you have ownership over it and appreciate it 10 times more. Unfortunately, my mom has been laid off due to coronavirus and I'm paying a little bit more each month towards our mortgage and utilities because of that. Yeah, so I kind of understand that, right? My mom is laid off. Um, I have to help with the mortgage or whatever. If you can, then yeah, obviously you're living there also. So it's not like out of character to be like, hey, let me pay some of this off, okay? But you you, you have, there's a balance. There's a balance between I pay for everything and I'm helping with something. There, There's a big balance there and you got to find what it is. I don't know this family that well, so I can't just make a lot of judgments here, but a balance is always important. Always important. I had a call once with someone that her dad was laid off, but he just didn't want to go back to work in any way, like as a taxi driver. So it's complicated. You have to know, are you laid off or can you go to back to work? This, this situation, I think is more like a layoff, but we'll see how it develops. Our family splits our household budget by mortgage, utilities, and any subscription services. So I pay for four to 500. Wow. Okay, so savings, 2,000. Investments, 1,366. Donations, so she donates money. Awesome, awesome. I believe donating money is very important. Food, only $200. I think yesterday, Kevin, me, Kevin, and like basically like his wife and like two kids were spending like $2,000 a month on food. Well, this girl right here, I think with her family, is spending $200. Yeah, he's spending a lot of money. Business, 200. Phone, 160. Transportation, 150. Utilities, blah, 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 blah. Overall here, one thing here, right? If you have a ton of debt, right? The answer is stop investing so much money 
and save us so much money. You got to grab that money and put it towards your debt. Finish that off as possible. And that way you're done with it. You're good to go. And then you have a bunch of money to go out there and invest. But the idea of I'm saving, but I'm also investing. I'm also paying off debts. No, you want to just go ahead and smash the debt. Smash it, smash it, smash it to the core. A month on the mortgage, $100 for utilities and $160 for all of our phone lines. I Four lines, $160, not bad, but you can probably get four people on one line for a hundred bucks if you if you know what you're doing. I really enjoy credit card shopping. I like to look at the latest deals and points that I can get. I just got this Chase preferred credit card, so they All right, I used to do that until I learned that basically when you use your credit card, you're more likely to spend around 18% more than you would with cash because cash has a pain factor to it. So when I grab my wallet, nice wallet by the way, I know you guys like it, but when I grab this wallet, whoop, and I give this person, for example, a dollar, I feel that dollar leave in my hand. But if I just, for example, give you my card, I don't really feel that that much, all right? And by the way, you know, you, you, you get some points, like five points, three points, two points, but you're spending over 18% more. Is it worth it? The answer is no. My priority would be, hey, let me pay off my debt as fast as possible. None of this like chasing points, none of this nonsense. Just being honest. They changed their welcome offer. If you spend $4,000 within the first three months, you get $750 worth of travel credit, which is awesome. Spend $4,000 within the first three months and get back $750 worth of travel on money. Is that a mathematical good thing? If you spend that money, on average, yes. If you spend that money, get in debt, and then pay them 24%, the answer is no. Of course it's not. I try to use credit cards as much as I can. I have a little system set up where I know which card to use when I grocery shop, which card I should use when I buy clothes or entertainment. and. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a game. It's a game. A game I don't like playing at all these days. How to get the best cashback deal for that. I started a cupcake company because my mom and my sister love baking. Okay, so now she's involved, for example, her sister and her mom in a side business, and that to me sounds like awesome. Family business, everyone's working, everyone's doing something. I love that. I love that so much. Good job, guys. And we always would make cakes or cupcakes for family or family friends, and I really wanted to monetize it. So started this company officially. By the way, guys, okay, just to clarify something here, not every hobby should be monetized because not every hobby can be monetized, okay? So if you do enjoy doing something and you still make a lot of money, it's okay to just do what you do for money and do something else on the side that you actually enjoy, okay? I love gaming, but I'm not trying to make money from gaming, okay? It's, it's just something I do on the side every now and then, okay? But not every hobby needs to be monetized, but if it can be, great, 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 great. But it doesn't have to be monetized all the time. Really, the beginning of this year, we had a few pop-up shops. We work with our corporate clients to do event catering and we do individual orders. I don't do- That is awesome. That is awesome. She has a little clientele like going on. The thing about bakery though, it is a very um, labor intense process, although it might not look like it, but baking is pretty tough. It is tough. It's a full-time job basically. So any of the baking, I always ask to like help out, but my mom and my sister tell me to stay as far away from the kitchen as possible. So- Wow. So she has the business, her mom and sister do all the work, and she's like the owner. That's awesome, right? Because now she freed up a bunch of her time, okay? <laughs> and it sounds like she's not that good, so her sister and mom were like, nah, stay away from the kitchen, man. I like the stories. It's a, it's a, it's a cute story. Well, I just do deliveries or like fold boxes, all that boring stuff. In the beginning, before COVID, we had a pretty consistent stream of sales because we were mainly targeting corporate clients who have reoccurring meetings or events. Yeah, yeah, but then after the whole, you know, pandemic, um, nobody's really meeting up that much, right? So how does she pivot? That That's like a big thing. I'm curious to find out what she did here. Let, let's see how she solved this problem. Entrepreneurs solve problems. We we're making around like 500. By the way, guys, look at that cupcake. That looks beautiful. That that looks like one of those like um like eight dollar cupcakes, like four dollar cupcakes. I would never buy one, but it's beautiful to look at. Right? It's beautiful to look at, but it has to be pretty difficult to make. Though. A week from that, unfortunately, because of COVID, our orders have fluctuated a bit. So some weeks we're making ten cakes, and other weeks we don't have any orders. Right now, our finances are a little bit up and down. 
By the way, Brandon, Brandon is key. Look at her with a little um with her, with her stickers and stuff like that. That's awesome. Brandon is everything. Brandon is everything. But I have high hopes for the company and everything that we're making, we're reinvesting back into it. So me not every single company should be not every single dollar you make from a business should be reinvested because sometimes a business is just a cash cow. If a business can make money and you take the money out and enjoy that money with something, usually it's not a good business, okay? You got it in some way. In the beginning, yes, I get it. Reinvest, reinvest, yes. But at some point, you got to take money out that business because if it's just eating up all your cash, be very careful. Be very, very careful. My mom and my sister don't take any money from the company. That's, that's, that. It sounds cool, but it sounds like a hobby. That's what it sounds like. Now, I'm being honest, okay? It sounds like cool, but it sounds like a hobby, right? It has to make you some money. Again, it's side hustle. You like it, you're good at it, it makes you money. If it doesn't have that last part, money is just a hobby. This right here is a hobby for now until it makes money and you can actually keep some of that money, okay? Bachelors of Business Administration, the gift of education. Awesome. I was able to pay for college because my cousin actually is a super genius and got scholarships to all the Ivy Leagues. And he had a Virginia 529 plan, which he actually gave to me and that. What is that Virginia? Oh, 529 plan. What, what, her cousin or her? Did I hear, if it's a, by the way guys, if 529 account is basically like a, an investment account, but just for like college. So I'm guessing because their family can transfer it over to her and that way everything is cool, but that's awesome. That's awesome. So he got everything that he needed, but he didn't really need the money, so he gave it to her. That's pretty cool. Funded around half of my college tuition. Christina took out around 25K of subsidy. Why does she still owe money? I don't understand. How is she making 100K, living with her parents, and still owe money? 25K on a 100K salary, that's like a, like, that's like a one year thing. Like, like you're done with it. What's going on here? I paid off my subsidized student loans first throughout my college years through various jobs and internship money. And I paid off all of my unsubsidized student loans the end of 2018. So right now I'm completely debt free. Ooh, so she is 100% debt free now. And usually you want to do that backwards. So I'm subsidized first because I'm subsidized means like, hey, the interest rate goes up. Subsidized means the interest rate is controlled. But awesome, 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 awesome. She is debt free. I am so curious for what's next for Christina, man. She has a lot going for her. I decided to pay my sister's college tuition because my cousin paid for around half of mine. Because he gave me that gift of education, I really want to do the same for my sister. I think that's awesome, that's great. But again, there's an ownership level to it. If I can build my kids a 529 account, I'm now gonna pay for the entire thing, all right? There has to be a level of, hey, you have to work while you go to college. So this way you have ownership. Plus it builds like um, work ethic. And that's that's very important. And a lot of people don't have work ethic. And not have that hanging over her head or my parents' head. Christina has around $55,000 saved, most of which will go towards her sister's tuition starting the fall of 2021. I guess that is pretty cool, man. But that's basically covering the whole thing, if I'm not mistaken here. There has to be a level of ownership towards what she's doing. I think sometimes by doing somebody like a like a blessing, sometimes you do them a hurt. So be very careful with this. Be very careful with it. By the way, fifty five thousand dollars that's like a down payment on a house, right? For for Christina. Um, so consider this. Consider these things. You know, like um, yes, you can help. Helping is no, is no problem here. By the way, you can do whatever you want with your money, right? But I'm just saying, you gotta be careful with this. She's saving the rest for, the, yeah. So now she's saving money separately for a down payment. You know, it's, 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 a, it's it sounds like a kind of like a, like an out of order plan, you know, but I get what she, what she wants to do for her sister, but a four year education and like, um just like have her pay for some of it too, Christina. Christina's family was living in Arizona when they were hit by the 2008 financial crisis. Yeah, yeah. Like the pandemic, you know, people got hit. People, some people like, um, did good on it. Some people got really hurt. It all depends, man. Some people, they get hit hard. 
we were having trouble making our house payments and eventually had to decide whether or not to sell my mom's nail shop and foreclose our house. That's what I'm so scared of, guys. Like building a system where if things don't go my way, then I have to sell everything. That's that's not what I want. Her parents sold both the salon and their home at a loss and moved in with their family in Virginia. That's tough, you know. And by the way, when this happened, guys, oh, like listen to me, like financial crisis, people were buying homes they couldn't afford because the banks were letting money out like crazy. So that's why I always follow the 33% rule and you also get it on a 50 year mortgage. That way, whatever house you buy, if market crashes, you can still go ahead and afford it no matter what. That's and put down 20% too, right? That's that's the big idea. But if you buy something you can't afford, it's big, big trouble. You know, big, big trouble. The biggest lesson I've learned about money is to have an emergency fund saved up, especially That's awesome. So she has 15k saved up, which is a lot more than she probably needs because she lives with her parents. But you know, again, man, it sounds like a little bit of order order. Yeah, foundation great, emergency fund great. But grab your money, save up for your house. Yes, you're also investing. That's awesome. But that house is very important. And then help your sister with her college, but don't pay for all of it. Especially seeing everything happen with the pandemic and my mom losing her job, having that emergency. She now has ten thousand dollars in emergency fund. Did she spend five thousand dollars? That would happen the there. The fund that I set up initially has really helped our family throughout this time. She puts two thousand dollars into savings each month. Saving is great. Investing is awesome. Something I wish I learned about money ten years ago is the power of compound interest. That's something that I'm currently doing right now, but I wish I had started a little bit earlier. Everyone says that. No matter how this girl's like twenty four, bro. Like twenty four. I wish I started earlier. Like you're still like super early, but everyone that starts, even at like six years old, I wish I started at one. You know, like it's it's like a, it's like a, it's a theme. But yeah, starting early is always important. Christina puts in seven thirty two towards her four hundred one k, five hundred towards her Roth IRA, and one hundred and thirty four dollars a month into her brokerage account. She'll be solid, man. She'll be solid. But again, you got investing is great. That's awesome. That's one part. But get that house, a house you can't actually afford. Pay for it, 15 year mortgage, try to pay it off fast. That way you're done with that. And also help your sister. Again, again, don't pay for all of it. I also have a Weeble and Robinhood account where I have a couple hundred dollars worth of stocks in there, but eventually my goal is to be more financially literate so I can invest a little bit more. Okay, so it sounds like she's like um dabbling around. For that game, I recommend like just use ten percent of your money to so just like have fun with it, or whatever. If you lose it all, great, no problem. You won't go broke, but you can't just be like a part-time investor. Usually, you gotta be full-time or like not at all, right? I just like do index funds usually, right? Index funds that's more passive, right? Mutual funds more passive and passive ETFs more passive. But like picking stocks and so on, like with Weeble and Robinhood, gotta be careful with that stuff because usually it's just a lot of speculation going on. Okay. Yeah. Faith has played a big role in my life, especially growing up. I was not too spiritual, but that's awesome, man. I've been reading the Bible a lot more these days. Look at this, guys. I read so many books, but I've never <laughs> I've read this book. I mean, I read the Bible, of course, but I've never like actually dedicated time to actually study it in any way. So I also started doing that a little bit more. And it has helped me in some ways, like change the way I think in some things, you know? Since I've come to know the word of God, I've been really involved in my church community as well as. Oh, so that 10% is probably what she's paying towards the church. Because as you guys know, if you're a Christian or whatever, you got to pay that 10% towards the church. And that's called a donation. Attending church every Sunday now virtually. But it's great to have that community of believers that I can depend on and call my friends. I donate around six to seven hundred dollars a month to the Rover Foundation, which I found out throughout my church. The Rover Foundation, interesting. The charity goes to different third world countries to provide education and spread the word of God to. Yo, she's like all about education. I, I love that. I love that, Christine. That's awesome. I think education is so important too. Children in need, and I'm very passionate about that. I feel very comfortable living in Fairfax with this salary. I gotta go. I gotta go. Like look some. Like look up some houses in Fairfax, on um, Virginia, like on Zillow, right? Like 
it looks like a nice, nice place to live, you know? It looks nice. Only because I'm living at home, but ultimately when I do end up moving out, I hope to make a little bit more just to be able to put a down payment on a house and pay off my mortgage each month. So hopefully... Again, the goal is not to pay the mortgage each month. The goal is to pay more. If you get that 30-year mortgage, you're going to have problems, yo. It's just an issue, man. It's just like a big issue, man. People buying houses they can't afford. It's the problem. It's a problem. A hundred K salary is awesome until you lose it. Things happen all the time, man. Within the next year or so, I aim to make about 120 to 130 K. It feels really good to be able to help my parents out. I know that growing up, they have worked 12 hour days to be able to provide for me and my sister. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. By the way, if your parents are immigrants, Talk to them about trade jobs, okay? Like, because you're an immigrant, like, once you know English, get in, people think sometimes, like, hey, I'm just not smart enough for, like, education, blah, blah, It's possible. I get the whole idea, like, put your the kids first, all that stuff, man, but take care of yourself, too, man. If you're, like, a parent, take care of yourself, too. Like, go get, go out there, get, like, a trade job, go to college, get get a nice degree, okay? Get a nice license, and then go out there and earn more money. Like, um... If my parents spend 12, 12 hours a day, like just working, working, that's awesome. But I would have rather to spend less time like working and more time on me, you know, like, like time is everything. Like time is so, so important. So just to be able to do the same and not have them worry about how they're going to. That is a nice house, by the way, guys. It's a nice house. What do you guys think? Nice. They're going to pay off their mortgage or how they're going to pay for my sister's tuition is a really great feeling for me. And it makes me feel like. Yeah. All right. That's it, guys. Sounds like overall, Christina here is a helper, you know, and she wants to help. Like, but, you know, being a helper, you also have to help people become independent. And she's also a little dependent, you know, and that can also be a problem, right? Her parents helped her. She helps her parents. That's fine. Her sister wants to go to college. She helps her sister. That's fine. But don't pay for everything. Okay. There's a balance there. Once you're taken care of, Christina, then you're good. But if you fall, then what happens to your family next? Okay. Because if you're done, what happens? Who's going to pay for anything? Okay. So, you gotta make sure you're good first and then help people along the way. That's the core idea there. Now guys, comment down below, let me know. I like this story a lot by Christina. Do you guys like it? Do you guys agree with it? Do you think like staying at home, like past 18 years old is way too much? Comment down below. I don't think it's a big deal whatsoever, unless you live like, in, like, in like a toxic, like, like a household or whatever, but usually it's not that bad at all. Guys, that is it for this video. Comment down below, let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. As always, like this video if you liked it. On top of also, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified. And if you guys want to text me or talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, join my Patreon, link down below, or send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. Now, before I go, if you want to watch another video, here's another video right here. And click my face right here. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.